Hey everybody, today we're going to look at the brand new Insta361 X2 and here it is. So the first thing you can tell is the design is a lot more robust. It feels really rugged, uh, has a really nice feel to it, it's pretty chunky um, and it has a screen. And this is actually a touch screen, so I can see what the camera is showing, which is really nice. So you can see what the camera sees. You can move it around in 360. You can control the camera. You can change the settings and all of that directly here from the screen. And if we look at it, we've got the two lenses, one on either side, which is enables us to capture 360 degrees all at once. Now, not everybody's using this as a 360 camera, so it's not always about VR. It's also about being able to get those impossible shots. And that's really more what I'm going to be focusing on in this review, because I see this as a really great tool that I can use to up my production value of my videos by getting those really cool shots that you can just kind of drop in here and there. So we're going to look at that in a second. But first of all, let's look at the build of this. So the original Insta 361 looked like this had a connector there that would connect into the phone USB connector and you would plug it in. Then came the Insta360 ONE X, which is this camera here, has a little screen on the front. Uh, it's not a touch screen. It doesn't show the picture, but it just enables you to see the settings as you use the two buttons to navigate the settings. The big thing about this is it enabled you to connect to your mobile device wirelessly. So now we have the X2, and the X2, of course, has the better uh, screen on here. Um, this also has the wireless connectivity. And the app works on iOS as well as Android. So let's look at some of the design features in here. If you look at the previous model, the SD card went in the bottom. It connected on the side through a micro USB. And the battery was a single kind of uh, door here. Now the bottom is sealed. And we actually have a couple of doors. One of the doors, if we open it on the side, so now it has the USB-C connector, which is really great. And that's really good when you want to connect to your desktop to upload your footage and do different things like that. Now, if we pop this open, there's a dual catch in here and there's a new battery. It's a larger battery. It has 55% more capacity, which can give you up to 80 minutes of continuous shooting. And also in here, you'll see this with a micro SD card fits kind of similar to what you would get in a GoPro. And this is nice because if you have this connected to a tripod in the past, you used to have to take it off the tripod or the mount to be able to get the card out. We don't have to do that anymore. We have a side button now to turn the power on. And then we have a front shutter button. And of course, all the modes and the settings we can do on the screen. So we just swipe so we just tap to see the settings. Then we swipe up and this is where we can switch between video, photo and time lapse. And you just simply tap to select that option. Then when we go into the screen, we can tap and we can see the settings for the camera. We can swipe to the side and then we have more settings for exposure, different things like that, shooting modes. We can choose JPEG and RAW, so we can shoot RAW photos. And then we just swipe back. If we swipe down, we get into general settings. And this has things like turning on and off the LED light there. We can connect to AirPods. So this means that this actually has voice activation, so you can uh, tell it what to do. And if you connect the AirPods from a distance, you can also send instructions that way. Uh, we have a noise reduction for wind. And of course, we have a quick start mode. Then we can move across. Uh, there's our voice. We can turn our voice mode on or off. And then we have general settings. And the settings enable us to change a number of different things. You know, where we can control the cards, format, you know, all those different things like that. Another nice thing about the screen here is that you can see your battery level as well as how much card is remaining. Now, when we're shooting with the camera, we have the option of shooting in full auto, manual, shutter priority, 
or ISO priority. And we have that for both photo and video, which is really nice. Now NVIDIA also supports HDR video now, as well as regular video. Okay, so in video, we have two different settings. We have the 360, which shoots the immersive video, or we can tap, and then we can go into 150, which gives us 150 degrees of angle. And this is the new mode known as Steadicam mode. So when you're in Steadicam mode, you can record, and it's gonna use that full uh, spectrum of these lenses to create incredible stabilization. In fact, it's flow state two. And uh, one of the nice things when you're shooting in Steadicam mode is it will stabilize the footage and it can also save it out as an MP4 or an MP5 file. So that makes it nice and easy for you to work with or edit later on. Now, of course, um, when you're shooting your 360, it goes into the Insta360 format. And when you're shooting in Steadicam mode, you have the ability to choose which lens you want to use. So you can just tap it and it'll go from the front lens to the back lens, or you can shoot on either lens. You can be using it as a selfie for vlogging, or you can be shooting out and capturing the environment. And because of this new build, it's now waterproof without the need of having a housing. So you can go down to 33 feet, which is 10 meters. Uh, this is IPX8 rated uh, waterproof. And with the optional housing for underwater, you can go down to 45 meters. Now it's worth bearing in mind, if you have the housing, you can shoot in 360 degrees underwater and it's gonna stitch. If you're not using the housing and you're just taking the camera itself underwater, you can only shoot in the steady cam mode because of the distortion of the water is not gonna enable it to stitch in 360 without that special housing. Now the 360 degree camera shoots up to 5.7K and have increased the bandwidth now that goes up to 100 megabits per second so you can get some pretty good quality footage out of this. And now this new model comes with four microphones and this gives us ambisonic sound which means when you're recording in 360 and if you're watching through a VR environment it means the sound is going to follow the camera. Because, you know, if otherwise you're hearing sound and the camera's rotating and the sound's in the same spot, it doesn't feel realistic. But now with that ambisonic sound or the 360 sound, it will track with the uh, image now. And it does ship with this little bag here. So this bag will protect it. And that's one of the things with the 360 camera. You don't want to put it down. That's why you'll notice I'm putting these on cloths because you don't want to set that lens down because you could scratch or damage that lens. But there's also a lens cap which is available separately, which I have here. It's just a little rubber lens cap goes on the top. It's a very nice way to protect it. And you can just kind of slip it in your pocket. And it's right there when you need it. So one of the nice things about it is, yeah, finally it has an auto power off. So that means you're not going to accidentally turn it on in your pocket and it runs out the battery. And then when you go to use it, uh, the battery's dead. And I know this happened to me a lot with the X, but with the X2, they've solved it by adding that. And to be honest with the battery, it's really lasted really well. I've actually been very impressed with the, uh, with the battery life, definitely living up to that extra 55%. All right, let's get into the good stuff. Invisible selfie stick. So if you've been using any of these, you're familiar with the selfie stick. So we simply attach the camera just by a regular quarter 20. And we just pop that open. And now we have the selfie stick that we can move around. One of the nice things about the selfie stick is in post, it removes it. So you can get amazing shots and I'll, I'll show you a couple of these shots where you can walk around and it's like you've got a drone flying around or you've got a camera crew following you around basically and it's all on the selfie stick which doesn't show and this to me is like one of the best things about this camera is just to be able to get those incredible shots um, on your own you know because a lot of the time I'm a sole shooter I'm out there I'm shooting by myself and uh, you know in the shots of me well what do you do you set up a camera on a tripod it's all right, but it's not exciting, but you can get some really exciting shots by using the selfie stick here. It captures everything. And then you can reframe the shots in post.
when you're out shooting, you're capturing absolutely everything. The whole environment, up, down, everywhere is spherical capture. And then you can go into the app on the phone or you can go into the app on the desktop and you can reframe. That means that you can change the way that that's framing. So if I've got my camera out here, I can be shooting forwards and then I can spin it around so you can see me on there. Um, and you can, you know, hold it above and look down on yourself and just get angles that would be impossible to do unless you were using a drone or a second shooter. So those are really, really cool. And one of the nice things about the apps is both the phone app and the uh, desktop app have tracking. So one of the nice things about that is uh, if you have a person in there, an object yourself, or it could be, you know, somebody else, a dog running by, whatever you want, you can select it and you can do auto tracking. So that means when it does the reframe, it will automatically reframe it to keep that object in the center of the frame. This just really saves a ton of time when you're working in post. And also there's a lot of AI stuff. They've updated the app and they've also updated the desktop app for a lot of AI. So uh, for example, you shoot some shots, you can just hit the button as little brain button, you hit that brain button and it will actually go through, analyze the footage and find the shots for you. And there's also a shot lab that has some amazing uh, things that you can do in there. And so a couple of the fun ones I've been playing around with is the shadow clone. <laughs> And also you can have the shadow trail, which I think is really cool. And there's a lot more there in the shot lab that you can literally just apply in one tap. And then you can export those out. You can do that on your phone. You don't even have to have the footage on your phone. You can download it to your phone if you want, or you can connect to the camera and just use the footage without even downloading it and uh, apply these effects and then you can export them out in high resolution video and send them to yourself. You can also use the desktop app and the desktop app is actually gonna give you even more power and this has the ability of doing all kinds of different framing and they've added a time shift mode to the app so now you can uh, change the speed within the app so you can ramp up things and slow them down, speed them up and uh, also with the exporting now, you can export at different quality settings up to 200 megabits per second, and they've even added ProRes. So if you wanna have some really high quality, uh, you can connect this to your computer. Uh, in the USB settings here, you can go in and use it as file transfer, transfer those onto your desktop or your laptop. And then all you really need to do at that point is you can export it out in ProRes and get some really high quality output. Couple more things worth mentioning. Uh, as I said, Flow State is now in Flow State version two, so it's actually even more stable than it was before. And I, I've, you know, and in my tests, I saw it was very stable. But one of the things that's really amazing is this Auto Horizon feature they have. So literally, um, I'll show you a shot here where I'm holding the camera, and I'm literally turning the camera like this, trying to make the horizon where it's not level, and you'll notice that that horizon just stays level. Even though you're in a 360 and you can adjust it later, it's so much easier to just have it leveled so you don't have to spend the time doing that manually. And the Insta360 ONE X2 also has this new multi-view. So that means, uh, say you're riding your bike or you're walking or you're talking, vlogging, whatever it may be. Um, you can even do live streaming, by the way, and you can even use this as a webcam, just throwing that in there. Um, but when you're shooting, you can be shooting your 360 environment and then it will also create a live picture in picture with face tracking so it can track your face so you can have a little box inside and be talking to your audience while uh, showing the 360. And while you're doing this, the 360 is still fully interactive. So that means if you are doing this as a VR or a 360 video, you can still pan around that video freely while also showing your face in the shot. So it's very interesting. All right, so I'm really looking forward to when I can start traveling more and start taking this out and getting some really good shots. This definitely is gonna have a place in my camera bag. I'm very happy with it.
which is ready for order today. So you can actually go online. In fact, I'll give you a link underneath where you can um, order these or find out more information on them. And the price is about $430 US for the uh, camera. The selfie stick is available separately as is the rubber lens cap. And of course, you do get this cloth um, cap that you can, that comes with it. So, you know, it's also a nice protective case. So I'm really curious what you guys think about it. Drop a comment underneath. If you've got any questions about it, uh, also drop that comment and I'll do my best to answer those questions. And by the way, if you guys are new here to Photoshop Cafe, we do Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials every single week. And occasionally I'll do a tech video. So if you are new and you haven't subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and you'll get that new video from me every single week. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.